Hi, my name is Tom Young from TomYoung.net and I just wanted to go over this Ferrari 330 GTS I have at the shop. It's a platinum winning car, so let's go over some of the details that makes it a platinum. This is a 330 GTS, like I said before, 1967 Ferrari. Uh, it really has a lot of things going for it. It's got a two cam, four liter V12. It's got a transaxle. It's also got really good brakes and it's a convertible. I mean, as far as Ferrari is concerned from older ones to newer ones, it ticks off a lot of the boxes that makes it just a really perfect car. Um, and this one in particular is, is, was done fairly well. I mean, everything was done. And like I said, it's a platinum car, so it shouldn't have any details that are wrong. And I'll go through some of it. I mean, Platinum is one of these things where a car is taken to a, a Ferrari level show in which out of a hundred point scale, they try to find everything that it, as it should have left the factory. And that includes, you know, the, the correct uh, details as far as the fasteners, as far as the, the correct wheels, you know, the correct um, trim and uh, all the little, you know, even as far as like stickers and decals. So, um, and this car through the, through the process of going through Platinum, um, has had a lot of these things corrected to the point where the last time it showed at a major show, it, it, it certainly attained to that level. One of the first things we should go over is the engine compartment. These cars are judged in three sections usually. They're, they're uh, judged for interior, they're judged for engine compartment, and then they're judged for uh, the exterior and, and uh, exterior of the car. So the engine is a third of all the all the points that you can gain or lose on these cars. So some of the details like, you know, the on the 330s, it's a Mylar hood pad with aluminum stays that, that uh, keep the pad in place. We uh, go down here and you can see that uh, the horns are several finishes on it from a candy red paint on the horns. The, uh, the backs of the horns are or hammer tone with those uh, little tags on it. There's a radiator strap that, you know, is CAD plated ends with, with black oxide bolts. Uh, we move up here and you can see that there's a hood prop rod that should also be uh, white CAD plated. Um, GTCs and GTSs have this little wire junction box with a knurled plastic knob and a cap. Uh, the fuel, regulator is there, the yellow fuel lines. This is also another detail on Ferraris or vintage Ferraris is they use this, this spiral wound fuel hose with these white CAD plated ferrules and banjo fittings and, and, uh, and also fuel fittings that go to a, a industrial chrome, which is kind of like another thing. A lot of the, the, the fuel rails that go across, you could just see it there is uh was chrome plated but yet it's not really a super shiny chrome but it's a more of an industrial plating but that's that's just tiny little details you have uh they look for the alternator to make sure that on 330s they use alternators and uh, they were usually either uh magneti morelli's or possibly even motorola's depending on how the car was delivered the stickers the the hoses were made by pirelli so these reproduction stickers are available people will put them on the hose clamps are Cheney's, which can also be found on a uh, on Jaguars, so that they're available in reproduction. Before their reproductions were around, we used to have to take the old ones, clean them up, and send them out for white cat plating. The uh, radiator cap, uh, FI, FIM radiator cap with uh, with a little rubber nipple because it's just it's a it's just a flat gasket on the back side of it, white cat plated. Um, you can see that the engine compartment is, is painted semi-gloss black. The air filter housing is also semi-gloss black with a, with a tag on it. The, their exhaust shields. There's just a, a bunch of tiny little details on these cars. You can see also that the restorer on this car put the yellow paint daubs on some of the nuts and bolts uh, that that uh, show that they were tightened at the factory. Now, obviously this car has been apart, but they're just reproducing what was originally done. If you look even lower down that center of the frame there is the uh, fuel pump, mechanical fuel pump. That's supposed to be a white CAD plate with cheese head flat screws on the top. Uh, the fuel line, the uh, brake lines rather, are, are uh, copper plated steel with aluminum clips, black oxide bolts. 
Uh, the, the orange thing that you see there is the top of the shock. That's a Coney shock, should be painted orange. The, uh, the steering shaft is, again, semi-gloss black, exhaust shields, dipstick, spark plug wires, uh, grommets on the spark plug tubes, because these tubes hold the spark plug wires that come up through here. Um, spark plug wires are supposed to have a keeper on the, on the distributor with, with O-rings that kind of keep them in place. Again, there's the other fuel hose. If you look closely back here, you have numbers on the distributor cap. Distributor caps are supposed to be brown. The reproductions are black. I think there are starting to get available where they're, where they're brown, but the original ones are brown. And, and uh, you know, the, the, those, are, those are little details that make, make this car more closer to the way it left the factory. Uh, you know, there's a charge cable here. Usually when we show the car, we'll take that charge cable off because uh, you want to, you don't want to leave that on the car. And I don't necessarily think it's a deduction. It's just one of those things that the car looks better that way. There's a washer bottle there or a washer bag. The, uh, even the clamps for the batteries or reproductions, they're, they're, they're reproduced so they look like the original ones. Um, moving across here, uh, you know, we could look at... Uh, the boot on the on the wire that goes to the water temperature sender that's that's a that's specific you know the there's a little bolt that goes on the top here as opposed in the and the nuts in the front the the acorn nuts on the valve covers are all supposed to be white cad the acorn nuts that secure the carburetor intake manifolds they're supposed to be uh you know a special acorn nut white cad plated as well um it's there are a lot of tiny little details that you can see in here that 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 you can look for you see that little diamond detail on the choke cable that's original ferrari put a little diamond thing to keep the end of the wire from poking you you know if if a judge knows to look for that and that's not there that could be a deduction but judges have to know what to look for so I keep saying this over and over again. It depends on how knowledgeable the judges are. Some of these cars can win and do really well at a, at a show and then go to the next one and you have a more knowledgeable judge. And all of a sudden, you're not even in, in platinum contention. You're not even in, in, in a podium contention. And, and people will complain about it because there's no consistency to the judging. That's something that, that it takes, you know, it's a little frustrating for people who do this for a living. But at the same time, you know, the, I believe that the more you share and the more information that you share out there, the more the judges know what to look for. And it makes our job a little bit easier because there's consistency to what everyone's doing, as opposed to saying, hey, listen, the last car I did, did had that and it passed and it was fine. Well, but it doesn't necessarily make it right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I could keep going on and on. I mean, you look at other things here, just just looking, you could you could. I come up with other things that, that are specific, you know, from, from the decals that go on this one. This particular car has a, um, has a Dunlop uh, brake booster. This early, you know, I think it's a 9000 series car, has the Dunlop brakes. Later cars had the Bonaldi's, I think, later GTS's. And again, with only about 120 some odd cars, I don't remember. I have to go back and research it. But you know, again, what it came with and what should be on the car is part of the research on these cars. We're going to move on into the interior of the car. Uh, when it's being judged, they go over just the fit and finish of the interior, whether or not the, the pleats are nice and clean and neat. The, uh, the trim pieces are all there. The uh, little details like the cover underneath, there's, a, there's an upholstered cover that goes under the on on uh, 330s they look for that they're going to look for the gauges see how the gauges look they're going to see the steering wheel see if it has all the <clears throat> all the right finishes and it's polished the uh, finish on the dash is a it's it's a matte this is a, a veneer but it's uh, the finish on it shouldn't be shiny the dash they, they look to see how that's fitting um, on these particular cars it's actually black vinyl not leather uh, same thing with the center console. It's also black vinyl, uh, not leather. A lot of mistakes that people don't know. They just kind of upholster the whole interior in leather, uh, try to make it all uh, a little a little nicer. But it, in, in reality, a lot of pieces on these 330s, they, they switched over to leather, like the top caps. 
to the doors, the armrests. Um, you know, 330 uh, GTCs, GTSs have this little package tray. They look for that. Uh, the gauges, one of the little things, tricks they do is the, is the clock. They want to make sure that the clock works. For some reason, the second hand is not really moving, but if you listen, you can hear it ticking. So it does, it does work. Uh, one of the judges told me once that the, the little trick they do is with 15 minutes to look at the car, they uh, make a note in their, of what time it is. And by the time they stop, if, if the minute hand moves, it, it, it proves to them that the, the clock is working. On uh, GTSs, you know, you have all these pieces up here, all the, uh, uh, the, the top assembly is all chrome. They, they look to see if that's nice and uh, assembled correctly. Even with GTC, GTSs, they, they have this little Velcro specific to this car. You know, the way they, they attach it to the, to the, to the top, it, it snaps off and, and is back on. That's, that's like a special thing to the, to the GTSs they look for. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of little details. You know, the screws, they want to make sure that they're all kind of matching. Even the screw heads, they're, they're, they want to see if the fasteners are correct. They want to make sure that the, the finishes are correct. The, the, the painted surfaces you know even on on a gts there's certain latches that can be lost during a restoration like for instance this little lever if we look the way it works is that it closes when you close the door it catches that lever and pushes this to cover the 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 little uh window it's because it it's it's made to be that way so that it flexes and closes the top so it seals the seals the top that's a little you know detail that that uh if you don't know gts's that's that's something that should be there very easily lost during a restoration um the uh the seats as far as the mechanisms are concerned they 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 want to make sure that's there you know simple little things does it have the the accelerator pedal uh plate it's another thing that that if you didn't know was there and it was restored it could be missing if you're not familiar with with Ferraris. the shape of the little levers that are that are in here um those those are specific to to ferrari are these are these buttons you know round that, that that's specific to this particular car um all those things you know the the switches that are is that white cad plated that's supposed to be white cad uh so generally there's the, just from both sides not only from a restorer but also a judge they should know all these details they should be looking they should know what the right rear view mirror is and how it should have that that little bumper on the top uh some people think that it should be white some people think it should be black but you know again it should be there um so uh when when it's getting judged depending on what kind of judge you get um they either know the cars really well and they can take a lot of points off they can also it can be just as much uh, of a problem if you get a judge that doesn't know the car really well and takes points off because he doesn't know the car he might say oh the, you know the the, the dash is supposed to be leather. Well, no, it's not le leather. It's supposed to be vinyl. You need to know as much about the car as the guy who's judging it. Let's move on to the exterior of the car. Uh, the car has, you know, certain details that they're going to look for. They're going to look for, you know, the wire wheels, if the car has it. They're going to look for the stampings. They're going to make sure that it has the correct number because there's an RW number for these wheels. So uh, each car had a specific type that they were fitted with. The other thing they're going to look for on the tires is to make sure that the, the tires are correct. A big uh, thing that's an easy one to lose on these cars is these tires were a 205 VR14 is the correct tire for this car. A lot of people put the 205 70 14, which is a, a lower profile tire. Uh, these kind of look like balloon tires at times, but that was the size that they put on this car. Have the wrong one. That's probably a half a point, quarter point. I'm not sure, but it's certainly a deduction in, in the whole scheme of things. They're going to look for badging. They're also going to look to make sure that these, these trim pieces are secured correctly uh, and, and that there are no miscellaneous screws because the piece fell off and somebody had, had uh, secured it with an external screw. They're also going to look for a uh, panel gap and how well the door closes. Um, you can see that, that uh, you're gonna, they're gonna check to see how well the door closes and whether or not the, ca the gaps line up and how even the gaps are. Um, they're gonna go over the paint. They're just gonna basically check to see you know, what, how the paint looks, what condition it's in, whether or not there's any rust bubbles. Uh, and, and they're gonna look at the chrome. They're gonna see how even the chrome is. Um, also how well it fits to the body. When you look at the gap, 
between the, the chrome pieces and how close they come to the body. They're gonna look for that. They're gonna look for, does the rear license plate have all the correct fittings and, and, and pieces that make it all up? Uh, there are a lot of places that, as a restorer, that you can get away with. And I'm gonna take a chance and see if this one has the correct screws, because if I know where to find it, I can find places that it's missing. Uh, and that's good, this car has the correct screws because there's two flat, large head screws that hold the rear, rear the reverse lights. They, uh, with people who don't know, they, they use the wrong screws, but most judges don't know to look there. So they won't even know that, that there's a point, there's a potential for a point deduction there. The exhaust is the same thing on these cars, although ANSA has been the replacement exhaust for these cars. They, the original ones were two other companies. One of them is Soretto. has a slightly different look to the tip and the way it's constructed with a chrome sleeve over the back. You know, they, this car has the Soretto sticker on it. Um, you know, a guy will, will restore a car and, and call up, you know, for our supplier and say, I need, I need a replacement exhaust. They'll sell him an ANSA because an ANSA is what's available. Not correct for um, a, a Concours car. It's, it's gotta be, one that was actually sold in 1967. ANSA didn't start supplying these, these exhausts until a few years later when, when ANSA or when Serato stopped making it for these cars. It's just a little, a little detail that, that people don't realize. You know, they're gonna check the body lines. They're gonna see how well the car looks as far as coming down the side of the car. That's, uh, they're gonna look at the way the top fits, whether or not, you know how smooth it is this car this top is not fresh it has a little bit of a of a of a fold in a crease in it but you know usually what happens in the sun the uh this car will will tighten up a little bit and and the top will be a lot tighter but you know i like the way this 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 top looks if uh you know i the the rear window to me personally although it's not a big deal i think the top edge is a little small compared to where it is i seem to Think it. I'd have to go do some more research, but but uh, it, it certainly helps the visibility out of the car. But it, it it looks like it's a it's a little narrow on the top on that top bow. But you know that's just a personal a personal uh, a personal thing. Uh, other things they look for is you look down here, and the exhaust is has a shield on it. They look for those. There's hangers that they're looking for to make sure that it has the right hangers and the right spacers. And uh, they, they also look for to, to the windshield and make sure that the gasket fits perfectly around or at least is as good as it can be for a handmade car. They're gonna look for the chrome to see what kind of condition it's in, whether it's scratched, whether the, 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 um, the little washers are there, all those little details they're looking for. And again, same thing. It's an exterior, you know, uh, exterior assessment of the car you know, a couple little things here and there that are incorrect, and you've got, you know, half a point here, half a point there, you're out of platinum contention. Again, same thing. They're gonna look for, you know, the lights. They're, they're gonna look for things. They're gonna look for the, the, the horse, the way it's hooked up. You're gonna look behind the grill to make sure that some of the other things are, are mounted in there as far as the fans. Does it have the front license plate bracket? Is it secured correctly? Um, all those things are places where a judge who knows these cars really well can take points off. So again, that's, that's the assessment of the exterior. A quick run through on the trunk, which might also be included in the interior uh, detailing is that on a GTS, they're looking for the boot. This is a cover that covers the, the convertible top when it's, when it's down, uh, that, that fits in the trunk. It, it, uh, that's something that they would be looking for. The, uh, on this particular car, it has toolkit. It's it's got two toolkits. It's um, it's one's for the one bag is for the jack, and and one bag is for the for the tools. Uh, on on 330s, uh, two piece toolkits. They should have these orange handled screwdrivers. You know, they they should have the grease fittings. There's a whole bunch of little things that that uh, fill out a, a toolkit. Um, that are specific to, to each of these models, but similar between cars. Uh, the, the thought on toolkits is uh, the toolkit and the books and tools, as, they, as you see a lot of times with Ferraris, 
that equals to four points total deductions. In other words, if you don't have a toolkit with a car and you're trying to win a platinum, a toolkit is half of those. So two points deduction if you have no tools whatsoever, two points deduction for if you don't have anything as far as a owner's manual or a warranty card or a pouch that should be found in the glove box. So my advice to people with tools, books and tools, is that at least get some kind of tools and some kind of books so you don't lose the complete four points. You know, with 97 points, three point margin to a platinum, if you don't have any tools or any books, you are guaranteed not to even score as a platinum. You need those points. And if you, if you have some idea of what the tools are correct for the car, you can, uh, that might take a half a point or a point. You might be missing the, the knockoff, the, uh, the hub puller. You might be most missing the grease gun. You might even have the wrong bag, but at least you have something. So, you know, they can't just say, if you have no toolkit, oh, you don't get two points at all. They'll take two points off. They'll, they'll give you a little bit of room. They might take a point off for, for, for having the incorrect bag or the incorrect pieces or, and, or if you're missing the jack. But if you have nothing, you, you've basically got nothing. You have points deducted for, for, and it hurts. It hurts the, the whole scoring of the car. Same thing with the owner's manual. If you can get a reproduction owner's manual, which is acceptable, you put that in a pouch, uh, you, can, you can get the two points. Or even if it's a point and a half, you're not fighting the, uh, the, the chance of not even coming close, even if the car, if this car as it sits is perfect uh, without the toolkit and, and books and tools, as nice as this car is, it wouldn't score a Platinum if it was missing tool books and tools. So kind of important. That's why these toolkits have gotten so much so expensive on, on the open marketplace uh, because it's, it's pretty crucial to people who, who want to show these cars. So I hope you enjoyed this video on this Ferrari 330 GTS and some of the details that are involved with uh, showing the car at a Concorde level. Uh, it's not for everybody, but it's always good to know some of the details that make a car perfect or as it left the factory and what they do for as far as shows and how they're how they're uh, judged to that standard. Uh, you know, and that's not for everybody. It, my car, my personal car is also a 330, but it's and it might not win a platinum. But when I work on it and I do some of the details on it. I do it to the same standard. It, you know, it doesn't take, it's, it's not hard work to, to finish things and paint them correctly. If you're gonna paint it, paint it the right color. If you're gonna plate something, plate it the right finish. Um, it just makes the car a little bit uh, closer to the way it left the factory. I mean, I don't wanna modify everything so it just doesn't even resemble the car as, as when it was new. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if I get time, I'd love to shoot more and share some more information with you. Uh, and if you want more Ferrari-related information, you can always go to my website at tomyang.net. Uh, it's got a lot of stuff in there, a blog, a forum, um, and, and things like that. And uh, this might end up being a little bit more stuff that I might do in video. We'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks, everybody, and talk to you soon.